on September 11th, we are moving to two morning services. Instead of just having one at 10, we are now gonna have one at 9 a.m. and one at 11 a.m. And the other change that is happening is that we are returning to the practice of the common cup. And so what that means is that the Eucharist or communion, which we share together every Sunday, instead of having the bread and the wine dripped on it, uh, as we did um, as a provision during, during COVID, um, we are returning to the ancient practice of drinking out of one cup when we come forward for communion. It, and I want to do a little explaining as to why this is. Many of us here at Redeemer have come to the church within the last couple of years uh, and, and are new to a sacramental and liturgical background. So we don't even know that this is actually, what we have been doing has been abnormal and that drinking out of the common cup, one cup together, is actually what's normal. And so I want to dispel a couple of myths about it and I want to, uh, I, I want to give a little bit of background as to why we're, why we're doing this. Because I understand uh, it's, it's strange to say we're going to be in a group of 300 people and we're all going to drink out of uh, out of a single cup. You wouldn't do that at a football game, right? Just pass your soda around everybody in the uh, in the stands and then drink out of it. So that would feel kind of gross. So why would we do something like this at church? So we have a series of videos here. This first one is just to give the background of why we do this, why this is important, why we're talking about it at all. And we're going to talk as well about is it safe? And we're going to talk about how to practically receive the cup and what to do if you have kids and how your kids can participate in it uh, as uh, as well and what your options are at communion. So series of short videos. This one will be the longest only, but by a little bit, the other ones are really, really short. So let me explain to you um, why we're even talking about this. Why is this such a big deal? Well, first of all, we need to understand that we see the sacraments, baptism and the Eucharist, as a means of grace instituted by God. In other words, God actively works through these things, and he's the one that started them. This, isn't, this wasn't the idea, like a party game that the church came up with. This is God has commanded his people to share in, in baptism and in the Eucharist. So he is working through them. You can read 1 Corinthians 11 and see this in other places as well. So when God works through these, uh, the sacraments, he is strengthening our faith. Something happens to us us by faith through his action. And one of the things that happens in the Eucharist, we don't have a time for a long sacramental theology today, um, but one of the things that happens is that this is a cup of unity. It actually, it actually draws us together. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, it says this, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Listen, because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we partake of the one bread. You hear that? We are one body because we share in the one bread or the one loaf. And he talks here as well in this passage about the cup. So it's not just a single bread broken, but it's also a single cup that is divided. And we see this if um, uh, in the scripture itself. Part of what we want to do in our sacraments is what the the reformers used to call similitude. And even, even before the reformers as well into Augustine, you should talk about similitude. In other words, that that Christ chose particular physical signs because they closely resemble the spiritual truths that they are that they are that they are bestowing and teaching as well. Because hopefully, as you've gone through our members' class and catechesis, you'll remember that a, that a sacrament is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. Something physical that you can touch, see, taste, and feel that points to something that is just as real, but that you can't touch, see, taste, and feel. So a physical physical sign of a spiritual grace. And we want the physical sign to closely match the, uh, the spiritual grace. And so Christ chose bread and he chose wine. Why? Well, partly because uh, of its resemblance to his body and his blood. This is why we don't use like Cheetos and Mountain Dew for, uh, for the Eucharist, because it's not, there's not a similitude there as to what it is signifying and bestowing. We also see in bread and wine that in the bread, lots of grain had to, to, had to fall to the earth and die, and then are made together into the bread. The same with the wine. It's many grapes that are squashed uh, and then brought together to be able to, in one cup, in a cup of unity. And so there's a similitude 
attitude in, uh, in that the, the grace of Christ is out of many, making us one, because there is, we are one body, because there is one loaf. So out of many becoming one, and the, the body and blood of Jesus Christ are represented in the bread and the wine. And so if, if the physical signs are supposed to match the spiritual truths, well, then this is why we drink out of one cup, because it is, there's one Christ, one salvation, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, and we are one holy Catholic and apostolic church. There's a oneness to that, and we see that in, uh, in the common cup. That's why we don't use the little plasticky cups, right, that, uh, uh, that we hand out to everybody, and everybody has their own individual experience of communion. This is our corporate faith, and God, through Jesus, has given us the sacraments to be able to see that, experience it, and to receive that grace uh, as, uh, as well. So a couple last things on this as to why it's important. One is the biblical foundations. I already shared with you what Paul said, but then also as we want to imitate what Christ and the apostles did as well. When we look in places like Luke 22 or 1 Corinthians 11 that talks about what Luke, what, what Jesus did in Luke 22, is that it says, and after supper, Jesus took the cup, singular. And over and over again, we see the cup referred to in the singular. Never in the New Testament do we see it as multiple cups. He took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. So he took one cup. And if we want to, if we want to take part in the sacrament in the same way that Christ instituted it, there is one, uh, there is one cup. Um, we, so there's a biblical foundation to all of this. And then after just a biblical foundation as well, the next thing that we see is that throughout the church's history, it has been this way as well. So much of our liturgy traces itself back from the scripture and then through the ancient words of the church. Our earliest liturgical um, reference point is from around 215 AD, where Hippolytus, St. Hippolytus of Rome, although they're not sure if he's from Rome, but anyway, we can talk about that some other time. Uh, he writes about the beginning of the Christian service, and then it says this, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. That's from the beginning of the third century. And those are all biblical words. We call it the sursum corda, lift up your hearts. And so we are engaging in worship as Christians have for thousands of years. And we see in these writings and in, in the early church description that this is how the that Christians received the Eucharist together. Uh, our uh, One of our Anglican fathers, Thomas Cram, who, who compiled and wrote a lot of the prayer book that we use as well, said this, One loaf is given among many people. Likewise, one cup of wine is distributed unto many persons, whereof every one is a partaker. Even so, our Savior Christ, whose flesh and blood he be represented by the mystical bread and wine of the Lord's Supper, does give himself unto all his true members, spiritually to feed them, nourish them, and to give them continual life by him. And as the branches of a tree or members of a body, if they be dead or cut off, they neither live nor receive any nourishment or sustenance of the body or the tree. So what he's saying is, when when we come together and receive the one cup, it's like it's a it's a, a show of our unity of being connected with the vine of Christ. Or Cramner here in the 16th century talking about um, the uh, the a tree and many branches and how we are connected in with it as well. We see that in the the Eucharist as we take the cup of unity. Okay, so. This is very different than sitting at a basketball game and passing around your soda. There are two different kinds of drinking, two different kinds of vessels, two different kinds of actions. They're not, it's apples to oranges of what you are comparing here. So let me say one last thing about this. I keep saying one cup, and then on Sunday you're going to say, wait, we have five different 
um, stations here. How does all of how does that work exactly? Well, you will see at the communion table up at the front when we celebrate the Eucharist, there will be one chalice in the center full of wine and one flagon of wine that is up there as well, a cruet of wine and one piece of bread. And we celebrate that there. And then after that, we divide that up into other big cups for you to be able to come and to receive uh, as well. So we are receiving from one cup, the cup of unity, because we are one in Christ. So there's biblical foundations for this, tradition of the church, ancient ways of worshiping, sacramental theological reasons why this is so important, that this is not just our individual act of piety, but a family gathering and a shared family meal in the one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is why one cup, a common cup, matters.